to just kind of uh, make sure everything looks okay on the stream and set up my cardboard live so that everyone can see the uh, the deck list on screen because that'll that'll save a lot of questions. It's great. Mm -hmm. All right, Cardboard Live extension is a go. What's, what's the last like paper event you played in? SCG Con? Well, it did not really go well for anyone. Like, the weather there was, uh, rough. We, we ended up getting out of school for the next three days. Uh, we ended up with about two feet, which for Roanoke with all the mountains and stuff, uh, it's absurd. Yeah, I, I had a couple of, of friends who I'm like, you know, if something goes wrong and you get stuck, like, I've got a guest room, we'll, we'll work it out. I've had a lot of fun playing with that card. Um, Time Pinkerton, thank you very much for throwing your Twitch Prime money this way this month. I, I appreciate it. Ooh. Uh, Annalise. Uh, all right, chat, are you hearing her audio? Uh, because that's interesting if you aren't. Because I can hear it. Oh, no. Uh, troubleshooting time. All right, my desktop audio is enabled. Hmm. All right, troubleshoot time. is weird because I haven't changed any settings since my last guest stream. Yeah, I agree. Um, let's just try the obvious first. Uh, I'm just going to hang up and let's call again and see if that fixes it for some reason, and then we'll go from there if it doesn't. Okay. 
just say a couple of things. Yeah, I'm not picking you up via my desktop audio on OBS. Um, No, it, it, it can't just go right. Then it wouldn't be streaming. All right. Um, do you have Google Hangouts? Do you have a Gmail account? All right, we should be able to do Google Hangouts then. Um, Yeah, that's okay. All right, so I'm going to hang up the Skype call. Sorry about this, chat. I'll, uh, I'll answer all the normal questions once I kind of get this stuff uh, figured out. Okay, uh, go ahead and say something. Oh, I'm still not picking you up on desktop audio. That is rough. Uh, it is possible. But it's odd because I can hear you normally and everything. All right, just keep saying some things. I'm going to muck with some settings. Deck. Man, that deck oh, is... Oh, hold on. I think I got you. Oh. Yeah, okay. So yes. now let me just uh, adjust volume levels to um, reasonable levels. Okay, just go ahead and say some things. All right. Hello, chat. Hi. All right. Uh, chat, can someone just confirm that we're we're okay? All right, we did get there. Hello. All right, great. All right, uh, chat, how, how is volume balance? Are, are we okay? If, if so, we'll, we'll go ahead and move on. I, it was it was on my end. Uh, my 
my program was trying to get the sound out of my speakers, which are turned off, instead of out of my headphones, which are plugged in. All right. I don't know <laughs> why that makes sense, but uh, it's, it's what was happening. Oh, no. Um, All right. Okay. Could I get the screen share from you? Yes. Or All right. Perfect. All right. Oh, oh yeah, we're we're living in a weird weird world. Uh, <laughs> it, it's the holidays, right? I wanted to to try a, a bit of a variety stream. Okay. So, Annalise, can I'm getting my my screen in front of like your camera face for some um, reason can you, can I you see like that. drag that around or anything or is that just gonna be is there forever that is that me i don't know uh i'm moving all my all right, windows what, okay oh that, all right it's on my end uh, <laughs> <laughs> i don't know why that's there that's so weird. Um, it really just can never be easy, right? It's okay. I'm just gonna make oh. your face bigger. <laughs> oh no! Oh, I can, I can scoot over here. Yeah. Can you just? <laughs> All right. It's a little. It's a little. It's a little weird. <laughs> Oh, this is so odd. All right, we got it. All right, good enough. <laughs> All right, sorry, sorry about the delay, chat. All right, real, real stream stream starts now. Okay. All right. <laughs> Hello, everyone. My name is Phil Gallagher. I run Thraben University, a site for legacy death and taxes. And normally on this channel, um, we're streaming exclusively legacy, but I wanted to try something a little bit different today. Um, so I wanted to invite a friend on and just like do something totally unrelated to what I'm normally doing. Uh, so we're going to be playing some modern Tron today. And I have someone who actually knows what they're doing in this format, unlike me. <laughs> um, so my guest today is Annalise Faustino, who has hello. multiple... Hmm? Hello! Oh, hello. <laughs> he said no, I'm like, ah! I messed up already! <laughs> um, so she has multiple finishes with Tron. So she has two second place classics, one of which is technically the first place. She has the plaque, <laughs> um, but there was a, a split involved for, uh, for player championship points. Mm -hmm. um, another second place finish in an open, a seventh place finish in the no ban list modern event uh, featuring Eldrazi post, same sort of stuff. And then a 12th place classic uh, finish as well as a number of other local finishes at the MTG First Game Center in Baltimore. Uh, so we're happy to have have her here today, uh, and I'm I'm looking forward to this. Uh, just some some backstory for for why she's on stream. A, it's because she's a great Magic player. <laughs> B, it's because she wasn't always a great Magic player. <laughs> um, so uh, back when I was at the University of Maryland, we had a gaming club every night or every Thursday night, and we would go out and just like play Magic until the wee hours of the morning. And she was learning to play magic while I was there. And we had mm -hmm. these like little guild decks I built, one, one for each one of the color combinations that I just bring to clubs so that new players can play. So one of the ways that like she learned a lot of the magic rules interactions and uh, like higher level strategy was just like by coming to the stamp and just playing games with everyone that was there. Um, and so it's really cool to have, see her progress as a player and be at the point where she's at now. And so just kind of wanted to, to do a throwback to one of my my old friends and and do something different on the channel. Yeah, it was a uh, it was a long struggle with the guild decks. I was very bad for a long time. <laughs> yeah, so so chat, you can you can probably see this. Um, so I still have them. I just have this this series of decks where I've got one for each one of the the guilds here. And it's all like commons and uncommons, although because people like them so much, anytime there was like a foil common or a common that would fit in the deck, they gave it to me. So it's like surprisingly blinged out now. <laughs> 
All right, so let's get into the deck itself. So All right. for anyone who is just like completely unfamiliar with what this deck is trying to do, we're trying to assemble Urza's Mine, Power Plant, and Tower and produce a ton of mana. Uh, those three lands together will produce seven mana, and then you can cast things like Worm Coil Engine and Karn ahead of time. You have some colorless, uh, like sort of mana fixing, because you're mostly a colorless deck if you look at the lands. So things like Chromatic Spear and Chromatic Star are going to give you your colored mana so that you can cast the tutors for your, your Tron pieces. Um, do you want to talk about some of the, the nuance of the, the main deck here and why some of these cards are here? Sure. So I, um, with the recent meta, so with all of the graveyard decks, the uh, Is It Phoenix in particular, uh, Dredge is big right now, Ironworks and Storm, which aren't great matchups, but it's still helpful. Um, but I have a lot of graveyard hate in my main deck right now. So I have three relics. Um, I usually only play two, and when it's very aggressive, you actually cut them from the main and just play your spatial contortions in the main. Um, but I feel like Relic is really where you want to be right now. Uh, even in the matchups where it doesn't really matter, like all the creature matchups, you can, you're can you still going to have so much mana that you can just pop them and use it as a cantrip. Um, on the lands, I am playing green, mono green Tron. I'm a huge proponent of green red Tron, but it's just not playable right now with the printing of Field of Ruin. That card really uh, just, it knocked the green X Trons out of the format. You really need to have the forests if you're going to be um, getting hit with Field of Ruin very often. Um, I'm playing one Ghost Quarter which and one Sanctum. Those are pretty stock. And then one Scavenger Grounds, which is a little bit off meta. All right, I, I have really to read like... that one. All right, so <laughs> it's a desert. Two, tap, sacrifice a desert, exile all cards from all graveyards. Oh, that that is a commitment to Grave Hate. It is a big commitment. And it's not, it's not good against the fast graveyard decks like dredge it's just not fast enough but um it can be good enough against phoenix it's very good against the snapcaster decks um and it's just about having a toolbox um with all your scryings and your maps being able to get the scavenger grounds is surprisingly relevant um even if it's not for those uh very fast aggressive graveyard decks but it can be the nail in the coffin if you get high enough that you know you've already cast your Ugin, you've minus, but they still have some um, blood gas or whatever in their graveyard. Um, other cards that you could play over that are like, you could play a Field of Rune, that's a little off meta. You could play a second Ghost Quarter, a second Sanctum. Um, you could also play a um, Horizon Canopy, which is an interesting card, being able to cantrip off of your land. I just don't like cards in Tron that make you lose life, which is why in the sideboard here, I'm not playing any uh, surgical extractions, and I'm going for the relics and the uh, Graft Digger's Cage that's in the side as well. I just don't like surgical extraction. It's definitely a card you can play. It's not the worst, but I, I'm not a fan of it. Um, so why don't, on... why don't you talk to me about the World Breaker real quick? Um, this is, I, I'm a little out of touch with Modern. This is not a card that um, Tron was playing back when I was playing Modern religiously. Yeah, Worldbreaker is actually really sweet. Just having the on-cast effect, it's very good against the um, any deck that plays counter spells, but it's also good against decks that remove your stuff. It's just having something that can go to the graveyard and you can cycle it over and over again. So it's important as a uh, Sanctum of Ugin target when you want to find that card that you're going to be able to cycle, that uh, it doesn't matter if it dies, but you want to keep blowing up their lands. That's when you get this card. Um, it's not the best thing to play on turn three. And honestly, you usually can't play it because you have to have a star out already. You really need like Nat Tron and then leave your star in place to be able to, play. it's really a turn four card. Um, but as a Sanctum search target, that, that's what it's there for. All right, let me field a couple of chat things real quick. I, I just remembered um, that I didn't answer them because I was troubleshooting. All right, uh, so Schultz Cube, thank you very much for the bits and I'm glad that you're enjoying the guests. Um, I've got quite a few planned. Um, I have one unannounced thing that's going to happen sometime this week. I don't know when it's going to happen, um, but I think I'm either going to record or um, stream a tutoring session of DNT that I'm going to do. Um, and then there's something else. Uh, what made me decide to play Modern? 
Uh, it was just for a, for a change of pace. You know, it, it's the holidays, and I have a chance to stream with people that I normally can't stream with, so I figured this was a, a good opportunity. And as far as the Legacy Open in Syracuse goes, I have to see whether or not that, oh, that overlapped with the anime convention that I've already committed to. Um, otherwise, I would totally consider a Legacy Open. And I did UMD for grad school. Okay, now we're, now we're caught up with all the chat for the last 15 minutes. All right, uh, why don't you talk to me about some of the sideboards? So, like, it, some of this stuff is still really clear to me. You have Thrag Tusk for your, your mid-rangey matchups. You have Nature's Claim for Affinity and other, you know, overlapped things. And then you've got, like, Warping Whales and Thought Nuts here for, for combo, Grafter's Cage. Um, why don't you talk to me about, like, Spatial Constortion and Spell Skype? So, Spatial Contortion... Um... That's that's just for aggro. Any aggro deck, any deck where you need to remove the creature, that's it. Um, Warping Whale is a fantastic card. I wish I had more flyboard slots because I would love to play more Warping Whales. Um, I've played that, a lot of that card in Legacy. I've been super impressed by it. It it does a lot more than you think it does. Um, the Scion mode is probably the least used mode, but just being able to ramp an extra... Uh, thing into an Ulamog or whatever. It's surprisingly relevant. Um, being able to block Sack against an opposing Worm Coil or something can be relevant. Uh, I've also, I've managed to block Sack against the Phyrexian Obliterator before. It's surprisingly, <laughs> I don't know. Um, but the, uh, the Exile mode is generally the most used part. Um, exiling uh, just X1 creatures um, at, but the counter mode is also really relevant. It's important for scape shift. Um, most of the combo decks, it's good enough to hit half of the uh, half of a past in flames. Um, it's generally for combo though. Um, the spell skites are something that I've been toying with since the um, rise of hardened scales affinity. I found that that deck can be very difficult to deal with because of all the modular, um, and it's really modular which is the reason I'm playing Skell Sight. And it has app other applications against Burn. Oh, <laughs> uh, Donut77 is talking about Boggles. Yes, it's also good against Boggles. But, uh, you know, it's good against Burn. Infect. It's good against Infect is, is the Is that still one. a deck? Is that still popular? Yes. Uh, recently, it's actually... At the Invitational, I played against... Uh, I only played four rounds of modern, but I played against two Infect decks, and then I played against another two in the uh, modern cube qualifier. It's it's out there now, um, which is not something Tron wants to see. <laughs> All right. Um, um, any other last thoughts you want to talk about on the deck list? Um. That's about it. A walking the printing of Walking Ballista has been absolutely incredible for this deck. I love that card. Um, being something that's both good against aggro and something that you can play that's huge and that you can pump mana into later. Um, there's not really any other card like it in the deck that you can play it and just continue to throw mana at it when you have extra. Uh, it can trigger Sanctum. It's just, I love that card. <laughs> Yeah, um, I played a little bit of Eldrazi Post in Legacy, and just, like, casting that thing for something stupid like X equals 5 or 6 is, is mm -hmm. just insane. You just laser your opponent to the face. And the thing is, sometimes just playing it as a 1-1 one -one is all you need to win the game. Killing their one creature is fantastic. All right, um, let's go ahead and hop into it here. All right, so... I have to figure out how to join a modern league real quick because oh. I've never done that. <laughs> All right, construct a tournament. Leagues. How do I get to a modern league? This is embarrassing. <laughs> I cannot help you with this. <laughs> I test mostly in paper. <laughs> Chat help. <laughs> <laughs> Aha, restore default. All right. Competitive modern league. Thank you, chat. Oh, no. I think you lost my face. I did. Uh, oh. <laughs> so normally with Skype, I keep the, like, preview that sticks around your screen even if you close it. 
Uh, uh-huh. So it looks like anytime I click on the screen, your face is going to disappear. Oh no. Okay. Womp womp. <laughs> All right. Modern Tron, only deck list we've got. All right. Let's battle. I'll pop you up from time to time when we're just kind of like waiting for things to happen. Uh. <laughs> Easy 5 0 in one hour. I hope so. Yeah, so I, I was talking about that with her before the stream because, like, normally a lot of the, the leagues I play with, like, the slow, dirtily legacy decks that I love, you know, sometimes take like three hours, but I imagine this is going to go considerably faster. Uh, our opponent has finishes with a bunch of decks, so we don't have great information about what they're playing. This hand is loose. Uh, this is this is not good enough. You don't have a green source. You don't have. If it had two Tron lands, I would be way more inclined to keep it. But it's this. Yeah, is this is not going anywhere fast. Okay. Uh, this is awkward. This is borderline. Um, I really dislike having two, the Ugin and the Ulmog. If it was a Karn, I'd be happier. I think this is actually a keep. It's This is super close. Um, so we're looking for a Tron land, a map, a green source to try to find another piece. Any egg is fine. I I would normally keep this. Like, having two Tron lands is fine. Uh, yeah. All right. Reluctant keep. It, top. We're not, yeah, top that. Snap top that. That's a, that is perfect. Um, having the Walking Bliss is nice. Raging Ravine. That is what we want to see. <laughs> All right. So in terms of sequencing, is there any order I'm going to want to play these out in, or is it irrelevant since they've all tapped for two? These ones are irrelevant. Um, you want to play the tower last if you're like searching for your Tron lands, but uh, yeah, if you just have them in your hand, whatever. You can like think about gaming your opponent. Is there like playing the one you have two ah, of? Sucker. <laughs> I just play the ballista for one and nug. Oh, that, yeah, right? blow that up. Blow that up. You. Um, so there okay. is some argument to wanting to play the uh, stirrings to avoid a um, discard spell. This is uh, get rid of the Ugin. I, I mean, Ul Ulamog, Ulamog. All right, the, get rid of Ulamog. The uncastable Ulamog that we would probably never cast. All right, sounds good. Um, yeah. All right, so I just cycle mm -hmm. this for a green and then hope to hit Tron, essentially. Yep. Let's find our Tron. That is not what we want to see. Let's go ahead and stirrings. Hey, there's the tower. We did it. All right. Perfect. I would snag that. Um, so is it worth it to chromatic star and stirrings at the end? Yeah, let's, it's worth it to just go for it. We might be able to find. Is it fine to just play the tower this turn? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. They're not going to. If they are going to do something, they're going to Assassin's Trophy it, which, like, there's nothing you can do about that. And if they blow up the tower, whatever. Um, let's try to find something else. That is a fantastic card. Yeah, that uh, seems good against Jun. <laughs> that is where we want to be. Um, O-Stone blows up Planeswalkers, right? O-Stone does blow up Planeswalkers. All right, so is that what I want? I would, uh, yeah, I would go for the O-Stone. I have a feeling we're going to be discarding the O-Stone to the Liliana, but we'll see what he does. I can play it now, though, if I want. Uh, I think our goal is to play the Sanctum, cast the Ugin, trigger the Sanctum next turn. Okay. Um. All right, so we'll just hold this and pass? Yep. All right. Yeah, the uh, 
The thing about Jund is that yeah, I would uh I would toss the Oblivion Stone. Um, all right, and if they, we are in our main phase, so we have yep. won the game. Um, well, that so, feels good. Yeah. So I, I just play this out and then Ugin? Play it, play the Ugin, uh, get rid of the Liliana, and yeah, there is almost nothing that they could do at this point. Um, now with this Ugin thinking about what we want to get. So we can't cast the Ulamog. We, uh, I don't want to get the world breaker in case they have a second Liliana after we blow this one up. So I would, it's between worm coil and walking ballista. Um, and I like worm coil is just so broken against Jund that that's you, my thought is just get another copy of that in yeah. case we get thought seized or something. Yeah. So, all right. Yeah, uh, blow up the Liliana. And there's just very little they can do at this point. If they spend their next turn trying to uh, kill Ugin with the Raging Ravine, that's fine. They've just taken their turn off. We're going to play a Worm Coil, and then we're going to play another Worm Coil. And what is this? What is this? All right, uh, so Junk Sphere. Yeah, Junk Sphere. And they got back their Dark Confidant, which does not do anything. So yeah, they're going to... It looks like they're going to go after your uh, the Ugin, which is fine. They took an entire turn off to do that. Um, and they, they just have no recourse against the... Oof. Yeah, so as soon as I get another mana, I just do it again. Yeah. They, especially after uh, having them use up their Kolagons command like that, uh, they need to have like all the Kolagons in their deck to beat one of these. They're, they're... And this deck is sweet. Like, we mulliganed, we kind of kept a crappy hand, and we still <laughs> just have it all. Okay, so you could map, map, map or... for tower, then play another Worm Coil. Yeah, that's probably just good enough. Um, but you can go ahead and attack with the worm coil first. Yeah, I, I'm not playing a death touching, life linking worm monster to not attack with it. Uh, is this two lightning bolts? <laughs> Deal. That is fine. That is. <laughs> 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 You got it, friend. <laughs> this is this is what other decks have to do when you're the bully, huh? This is what it feels like, and it feels really good. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, like, we kept kind of a, like... The thing about uh, playing on Modo is that you don't get to, like, have the poker face and, like, really game your opponent. You have to... <laughs> <laughs> like, they, they're just going to assume that you have it because you're playing Moto. There is no poker face. But in paper, like, that hand wasn't good. And we, uh, yeah. So we're just going to snap the Ugin. Play Ugin oh, plus uh, on the Bob. Yep, yeah, plus on the Bob. And, uh, yeah. That Raging Ravine has a plus one, plus one on it, right? Yeah. So we can ship with the Death Touch Worm. So our opponent does have Fatal Push that they revealed. So does that change anything about how we want to attack? No. Uh, if they push the Death Touch Worm, that's fine. I All mean, right. they, they're going to it. Um, Actually, let me think about that. So... If we attack them for nine this turn and they don't and they push the lifelink worm and attack Ugin, Ugin's gonna go down to this is four five, it'll go down to four, and we're just if they do that, we're actually just yeah, gonna we're just kill gonna kill them, them right? So I can yeah. just ship with everything. 
relationship with uh not the lifelink worm because it'll just die oh i see yep okay yeah. And yeah. So how does our opponent get out of this? Is there like anything they can draw? It um, seems relatively hopeless. I um dreadbore would be a, it, it would have to be like dreadbore into like three more colagons commands that's that's it i see um yeah <laughs> they're I don't all right know. so we just let ugin take this hit right yeah, and just attack and plus it. yep yeah they drew a land so womp 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 womp. <laughs> yep. So Thragta seems great. Yeah. So this is one of those matchups where you board just pretty minimally. Thragtusk is fantastic. Um, let me check my sideboard guide. Um, where are we? Jund. Um... We can, so relics are fine against Jun, but they're just not really good enough. So I usually board the relics out. Now, there have recently, since the printing of Assassin's Trophy, there have been uh, just like people that go trophy your land, extract it. That's not good for you. Um, that's that's really bad, and that really is Jun's recourse against Tron since it's such a bad matchup for them. So there is some argument to leaving in like if we see it in game two, if we get we'll like board them back in for game three. Yeah, um, yeah. All right, is is this it for sideboarding? That's it. This is a good matchup. You just don't need anything to beat Jun. All right, great. <laughs> Yeah, if you if you like see that they're like the Grim Flayer build, this is we are on the draw. So this hand is like mostly fine because you have the stirrings into stirrings and you have a map. So this is this is fine. We just okay. need to make sure that we play our sphere on turn one. Um it gets bad if they thought sees us turn one and they're smart enough to take the sphere, but we still have a map as a backup plan. Uh, we have to draw one more land to like get that online. Then we can go get a forest if it's a not a uh, green source and not the other Tron land. Um, but yeah, getting thought seized here definitely is a concern. Yeah, there All it right. is. All right, it's happening. <laughs> An opponent can't even misplay and take the worm coil engine. I know. They do have a lot of options. If they're smart, they'll take yeah. the sphere. Yep. Okay. And look at that. You're a master. Definitely do not play the power plant. Play the yeah, uh, tower. play the tower that they know about. <laughs> um yeah, this is this is where that poker face comes in in paper where you just sit there and you're like, you put your head in your hands and, and you, you just <laughs> like, ah, uh, why? You sit there, make them, uh, make them think they won the game. <laughs> <laughs> like lay, laying it on thick like that is, is so fun. It and it really does change what people do in paper. It <laughs> they're. There is some bluff game to Tron, despite how straightforward the deck is in general. Yeah, I don't think people appreciate that sort of thing enough because, like, a lot of people don't see the value of, of doing it. So, for example, when I'm playing Legacy, Death and Taxes, all the time, I'll, I'll respond to my opponent <laughs> doing something, just like, stone face, activate Vile on two, and look <laughs> at them, and they're like, God, what is it? What could it be? It's, it's um, nothing. <laughs> um, fetch in response. <laughs> okay, violent activation resolves. Nothing. Uh, 
<laughs> you cheeky son of a gun. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Now, uh, all you're going to do is play your power plant and pass. Pass. If they don't have Assassin's Trophy here, you are, <clears throat> you're able to play your Worm Coil. It gets really hard. Um, worm Coil is just like the, the cards that have recurring value. Like this is a Jun deck. They want to go one for one with you. But when you're playing these larger creatures like Thrag Tusk and Worm Coil that have that recurring value... They just they cannot keep up with it, and like they can they can work through like one worm coil if they have multiple Colion's commands, if they have the Liliana to make you sack it immediately and then follow up. But um, yeah, with if they don't have the trophy, it's going to be bad for them. And the thing about Assassin's Trophy and Ghost Quarter or Field of Ruin is that they give you your green source. So. Um, when they do it, you're going to get all that mana back. You're going to be able to respond to it with the map. Um, this looks like a Liliana. Oh, Ooh. Man. All right. Yikes. Um, yikes. This uh, B Smitty is sick of losing to Tron. Oh, shit. Um, oh, shoot. <laughs> <clears throat> That's all right. All right. <laughs> That's all right. This is fine. This is you fine. know, actually, I just wanted to save that map because clearly I'll just naturally draw a Tron piece and then I'll tutor for the one I need and this will work out fine. Um, so here, um, you actually want to play the star out in case they want to Colagons command it. Because uh, the star will draw you a card, the sphere will not. L little edges, they, they matter. Little edges... The only place that Sphere is better than Star is in the Lantern matchup, where it is a mana ability, and you get to draw whatever you want off the top of your library at mana speed. Um, but generally, Sphere is worse. Oh, that's neat. Yeah. <laughs> so the, these are the things you learn by just like playing a deck over and over and over again, is you come across like the fringe scenarios that are really important when they matter. <laughs> Yeah, you don't get a lot of lantern these days, though. Uh, that's not good for us. Yikes! <laughs> Yikes, confirmed. Yikes. All right. All right. So, now that we have our green source, I am more inclined to cycle through our deck. We also have a lot of stars and spheres out, so I would say go ahead and start by uh, popping the sphere for green. See what we draw. It's uh, it's not looking great for the home team right now. We actually have to draw just land here. Yeah, all right, we drew um, land. Play our walking ballista on one and uh And pray. by time. Yeah. Yeah. So like, I, I made a misclick this match. Like, I'll 100% own up to that. But at the same time, I don't think it's one that probably mattered too much because, like, we're just going to get obliterated here. Like, one more piece of follow-up feels like it's just going to be lights out. Like, I'm at eight life. If my opponent can remove the ballista, then I take seven this turn. Yeah, this is a uh, this is a Jun player that is prepared for Tron. The Fulminator Mages are... Uh, from someone who's been burned one too many times. I have a feeling they probably are still playing the extractions just because Phoenix is great. But the thing is, you don't, like, really need it on game three. Um, yeah, it's it's not as good on game three when you're playing to get your corn out on turn three. If they're spending their turn two playing an assassin's trophy and extracting you, like that's bad. It's not good, but you're going to be able to get to five mana and play your tusk or whatever. Okay. That makes sense to me. Um, our, our opponent is double queuing in another event right now, which is why they're playing slowly. I don't think they're actually tanking on decisions. Yeah. It, it's a, uh, I think this decision is pretty straightforward. Is a Turn smash. them <laughs> sideways. 
I block a Tarmogoyf, I shoot them for one, and we go from there. Yeah, so your your recourse right here is like um we have to draw an either a Tron land or a walking ballista. Uh, they're gonna put us yeah. So we have to we have to draw another Tron land and like stirrings into the walking ballista or draw the walking ballista and stirrings into another Tron land. Um because we need to hit Tron on turn four, or we're just it's it's over. So we're we're playing to a small out here, but you gotta have faith. Part of the cards. Sounds good. That's not good either. Yeah. Huh. Oh. Oh. Uh. <laughs> I was going to say, this play doesn't make a lot of sense to me. All right, now we're just 100% dead, right? Just no outs. No outs. All right, and we don't need to change any sideboarding for being on the play, right? Not against... Uh, not against Jund. There are a lot of matchups where I... Like, more than 50% where I change play draw... Uh, Jund is not one of them. Yeah, I, I think that's a part of sideboarding that doesn't get discussed enough. A lot of people think it's, this is how you sideboard with a matchup. But no, that's that's not true. Play, play draw matters a lot in faster formats. Um, Tron in particular, uh, Karn is a card that is absolutely fantastic when you're on the, when you are on the play. You play your Tron in turn three, and they've played some... Uh, rinky dink two mana creature like you almost certainly have won the game and at that point you can just plus and they're gonna lose you don't even need to minus on their you've gained 10 life off of tron um karn but uh on the draw a lot of the times you can just against uh go wide decks like decks like uh, affinity that are gonna go wide enough that karn just isn't gonna be good enough that um you leave two in on the play you board them all out on the draw it's just not good enough Yeah, it, it's so weird to say that, like, this seven mana Haymaker card isn't good <laughs> enough sometimes. They're, the scariest thing someone can do is just ignore it. When your opponent is just killing you, it's not good. All right, looks like our opponent is going to take the next minute here and just play their <laughs> other match. <laughs> so other than Magic, have you been playing any other games recently that you've been enjoying? I have been all over Arena. I I don't really play any other games except for Magic. I'm addicted, but uh, Arena's been fantastic. I've been uh, crunching up newer players in the uh, GRN drafts. <laughs> Poor <laughs> um, This seems medium bad to me. This is not good enough. It. This is basically the same hand, except we have an ancient stirring. So, uh, with the, um, with the scry, this is okay. We can probably find our Tron. We have a walking ballista to knock off a bob if they have that. And like even if they do fulminator us, we have enough lands that we can it's yes. not the worst thing in the world to have for lands. Top this. Uh, top that. It's a good one. Alright, and should I go ahead and ancient stirrings on one or just like play tower pass? So the thing about that is we uh, we know that we're going to draw the map next turn, and if they thought sees us and take the ancient stirrings um, versus like playing the ancient stirrings now and taking the map, uh, there's there's no difference. I would uh, like to force them to have the inquisition or the thought sees inquisition whatever and just play out the tower for now. Okay, that was kind of my inclination as well because it gives us two tutors afterwards. Yeah.
Scry made uh, magic harder. <laughs> Turns out. <laughs> uh, agreed. <laughs> it it did some really weird things to Mulligan decisions. I yeah. think previously people kept a lot of mediocre sevens, and now they're just like, ah, whatever. I'll Mulligan this. I can probably do better. <laughs> Yeah, Mulligan Wing with this deck is, it's so weird, because you can go to five and feel like you're on seven, just because the power level of your cards is so much higher than your anyone else you're playing except the mirror. Yeah, like... Uh, or aggressive decks where... Ugh. Yeah, I imagine, like, Tron Land plus a bomb is just all you need. Yeah, your, your Worm Coral Engine is worth two or three cards. It's... You get so much value out of... Well, you know, you paid seven mana for it, you deserve it. Yes. <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, I got, a, I got a switch on Black Friday, and I've been just playing that so much. It's what the great, greatest. Smash, or? Um, I've been playing a lot of Smash, um, but I've been working my way through Mario Odyssey. It's, it feels like Mario 64, except there's like 900 little moons to collect instead. So the ah. game's just huge. Oh, that sounds great. I loved Mario 64. That was a premium childhood game. Oh, yeah. It seemed so difficult at the time. I know. But now I can go back and just like plow through just about everything, except like the last stage or two. TikTok clock. Still, oh. still brutal. <laughs> oh man I remember that that lava level with all the eyeballs being like super creepy I loved it I love lava levels I love all, anything that's like lava ice your jungle levels your desert levels like that's all great they don't do that anymore <laughs> yeah so the lava level in Mario Odyssey is actually a cooking level as well and, and people are like trying to make some sort of like super stew out of the lava. <laughs> oh, that's fantastic. It, it was pretty ridiculous. <laughs> oh, boy. Then I've been playing Shovel Knight. Oh, I don't know what that is. All right. So, did you ever play Mega Man growing up? No, but I watched the like TV show. <laughs> so. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry? I, yeah, I, don't I don't know. know. <laughs> was it, like, terrible? Because... I was... I mean, it was Saturday morning cartoons. I loved it when I was 13 years old. <laughs> All right, that's fair. All right. Well, it's like a 2D side-scroller, except, like, your weapon is a shovel. So you just, like, run around beating people to death with a shovel and, like, playing through these, like, side-scroller platforming levels. Oh, man. <laughs> And then once you, uh, you you beat the main game, you can go back and play through as, like, the villains instead with slightly changed levels. Oh. That sounds hard. That's a, Like, those simple games get so hard. I, it's too stressful. Uh, yeah. I <laughs> rarely made it through a section of a level without dying once, like, in my first <laughs> playthrough. It's just like, all right, this is the sort of game where we learn what we're supposed to do as we die. <laughs> Ooh, Mario versus the Rabbids is on sale for twenty dollars. That is a, that is a good deal. Um, Chris was actually telling me to buy that game. Oh, yeah. I need to talk to him about getting some uh, team tournaments going for the for the year. He is usually our legacy player. Yes, uh, we're, we're talking about Chris Hawker, who uh, has played a lot of Miracles historically, although he, he experiments a little bit. Uh, he was uh, one of the original UMD players, Terrapin Gaming Club. Good times. Good yeah. times. So while we wait for our opponent to play out their other match and die of old age, um, we, <laughs> we used to play a lot of a, a format we called Stack where you just, like, show up with a pile of cards, and it's kind of like a cube, but instead of drafting it, you just, like, draw cards from it and play them out. Um, and it was a, a really fun game of, like, resource management, um, because you could, like, play your cards as lands face down that just tap for any colors, 
or just play them out, like, later on. All right, our opponent is back. All right. I miss stack so much. I uh, have a cube now, and I just, like, can't get people together to play it anymore, and I'm thinking about converting it into a stack so I can play one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah, I, I really enjoy uh, cubing in person. Like, I just... Mm -hmm. Really love sitting down, having some drinks for the evening with friends, and just like playing a cube. So now I'm more interested. So I don't think he has the Inquisition or Thoughtseize because they would have played it. But I'm more. I am interested in protecting our stuff. So let's let's just start off with the ancient stirring. See what we find. Um. Oh, well, there's a Tron piece. There's a Tron piece, so we're gonna snag that. And then I just play out the map. Yeah, so they cannot... The only way they can blow it up, they're not gonna be playing, they will have taken out all their abrupt decays if they were playing that. So the only way they can blow it up is with the trophy. trophy and then we get a forest anyway. And yeah. all right. if, they're, if they're hitting your map, they're not hitting your tower, so. <laughs> Um, if they were on going to three mana, it would be scarier because of Kologon's command, but I don't think we're going to get punished here. Yeah, oh, yeah. This, this is fine. this is irrelevant. Ooh, buddy! Ooh, buddy. Now yeah, we so are... Yeah, so now I just play mine and pass. Mine, pass, and hope we don't get trophied. <laughs> or Fulminator. Fulminator would be... Not great, and he sh they shocked, so... Okay. Take the two. Go to 18. One of the nice things is that you don't have that many creatures, yeah, so... Ugh. So, what am I doing with this map now? We are going to get whichever land they blow up. Um, just let them let them resolve it. Let them pop it. Um, now, if they don't pop it on your end step, just go ahead and uh, get the uh, power plant. Okay. Because otherwise, they're just not going to do it. Yeah, and they'll just sit there and attack with it forever. Yeah, and then you can play out your two-two walking ballista, which okay, and they are doing it. Um, so yeah, we're just gonna go get another tower. If we get extracted here, that's really, really bad. And right. we did not. Stirrings first. Um, stirrings first. Although we are going to be playing the tower out. Um this is not really what we wanna see. I wanna take the chromatic sphere. And just cycle it. Yeah. And we can go ahead and cycle it now. In because, case we draw stirrings. Or just um, another colorless card. Both in case we draw stirrings, and because I don't want the sphere to sit around. Um, that's also not really what we want to see. All right. Um, unfortunately, the Scooze is going to have... It. Usually in this matchup, Scooze has like nothing to eat, and it's an awful card. But uh, they actually do have the Fulminator to eat. So... I'm kind of That's hoping not... they tap out so that I can just, like, walk in Ballista, dug that for two, and take it off the board. Yeah. What is this? Blood Braid. Uh... Ooh. Alright, there's a lot of pressure now. We... We need to find something. Uh, okay. Okay, that is something. That is so, that is Tron. We can uh, Sylvan scrying, play, land, and then Ballista for two. Yep. And then Ugin next turn. Yep. All right. They haven't had the discard spell so far, which is good. 
Uh, it makes me feel better about it. And uh, hopefully they continue to not have the discard spell. When we have Thoughtseize next turn, I'm going to cry a little bit. <laughs> Alright, so I guess my question for you now is, do I just nug something for two right now, or do am I is my plan block and then kill something? We are just trying to preserve damage, so they can grow the scoos. They're going to be able to grow the tireless tracker, so uh, you can go ahead and pass. We're going to block whichever... Probably the tires cracker will be the biggest thing. Um, try to force them to pop their clue. Uh, otherwise, I'd rather just trade with the tireless tracker. Um, but it's like preserving damage is the most. I'd like to kind of tax them by forcing them to pop the clue. Um, and then kill the blood braid elf. Beginning of combat seems like a really awkward time to do that. Yeah, I don't know about that. Yeah, so do I just uh, nug this here? So I would say uh, just block the tireless tracker, kill the blood braid elf. Okay. Uh, preserve as much damage as you possibly can. Yeah. In, in Legacy, anytime I see a tireless tracker, it's just like, I want this dead now. <laughs> it that is... card makes me very nervous. Less concerning here. Yeah, you have big, dumb, giant idiot that is going to clean up just fine. Fudge. No! Oh! <laughs> oh my. Okay. All right. Um... So I can play star, cycle. Yeah, cycle it. See if you can find like a Sylvan Scrying or something. We're going to be taking a lot of damage next turn, and we really need to find it. And uh, Ugin is going to be our only out. Oh, well, no. <laughs> uh, all right. Uh, I would play the Ghost Quarter here. Okay. Um. So I have one, two, three, four, I'll have five next turn. Uh, so we basically need to like naturally draw into Tron or draw it's into Tron. something that cycles into it. Yeah, it's it's Tron or nothing at this point. Um, I'm choosing to play the Ghost Quarter in case they play a uh, Raging Ravine as uh, Ugin doesn't deal with that very well and I'd like to have the Ghost Quarter on the field. That makes sense to me. This is going to hurt. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Four, five, six, seven, eight. What is this? Uh. <laughs> All, right. All right. All right. It's a, uh, it's Trotter bust. Uh, oh that, that... no. So okay. I can Sylvan Scrying, get it, play Worm Coil. Is that good enough? Well, let's find out. <laughs> All right. So I need Power Plant, Mine. I need Tower. Tower of Power. Well, the good news is that if this is good enough, Ugin Friend comes down the next turn. I have a feeling like they have they have a lot of ways to make this not good enough with the uh, Kologon's command in combat to remove the lifelink is there's that raging ravine I was talking about. Uh, here we go. All right, they're looking. <laughs> oh, no! Oh no! Don't do it. Well, they wouldn't be doing it now. Uh... Uh... <laughs> Oh, they didn't attack? They did not attack, but... Well, okay. So what can I do here? So I can play this, crack this, get Tron, have five mana, do nothing with my five mana. Yeah, do nothing. Make sure you leave that ghost quarter up. Yep. And uh, hang out. I guess I play scavenger grounds. And... Uh, no, 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 no. You want to uh, or do play I the just, map, like, crack put, the map. Put it in play. Put it in play. If they have another Fulminator, they're going to blow up a, a 
yeah, it, you need to just get the Tron land. I'm hoping we draw a Sanctum of Ugin. Like, we're, we're going for the, we're not doing well right now. We need to reach for the stars. <laughs> All right. Nice. Hail Mary. <laughs> <laughs> Please. <laughs> Don't get any ideas over there, I found it. I can't Four beat mana. any ideas. Oh, that's oh, bad. No. That is not good. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that's really what they want to do. Giving us two blockers. Yeah, isn't... this might be okay, right? Like I can block two things, gain three life, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh wait, am I still dead? So I, right. I block these two. They'll deal me seven. Eh. Uh. Pretty sure that math's out to dead. One, two, three, four, five, six. That's unfortunate. Womp womp confirmed. Man, and I would have like gotten to oogin away all of that stuff. I know. Disappointing. All right, that all was right. that was a long one, mostly due to our opponent double queuing. But <laughs> whatever, that's that's how it goes sometimes. <laughs> it do be like that sometimes. <laughs> it do. It sure do. That's all right. Sometimes Jund plays three Fulminator Mages and you feel really bad about it. <laughs> oh. All right. This is a wonderful hand. All right. The... <laughs> yeah, I have two pieces of Tron, a way to find a third. Deal. Easy peasy. Hallowed Fountain is a land that you love to see. All right, so just play out a power plant map. Yep. <laughs> All right. I, I, I made a mistake in game two, but we were losing that one anyway. Well, I have a lot of power plants. All right, uh, that, yeah. that's all right. Um, having the Sanctum is actually really nice. Yeah, that seems like a hard card for Control to consistently beat. Like, it's going to get countered, which is fine. Um, it, in fact, um, I'm sorry, Ugin is actually not as good against Control as you'd think, because it just gets, like... It gets negated, or you spend eight mana and get it ceremonious, which feels really All right, bad. Just jam the worm coil this turn, and then I get to play Sanctum into Ugin next turn. Slam a jamma. <laughs> as well as the uh, star. Yep. Ooh. Mana leak. You don't see that very often. I played a this, lot of Mana Leak in Modern. It used to be really good, and it's really not anymore. This is some classic. Uh... All right, Sanctum. Do I, do I want to, like, cycle this first since it's free to do so? Or do I just let this hang out? Um, I think we're going to let it hang out in case we draw another land and, like, a green spell we want to cast next turn. Okay. Uh, we're, we're not casting anything with it, so it's fine. But, yeah, Sanctum... Uh, trigger Sanctum, and we are going to get an Ulamog. Is that card good? It's pretty good. <laughs> this is uh, about the worst sequence of events for our friend Nick over here. <laughs> like, they can counter this all they want. Or logic not. Okay. Yep. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. <laughs> um, so the sequence of lands you want to blow up, if if this is a good uh, 
we're done. But oh. um, yeah, we're done for turn. But for, the, oh, uh, right, I sacrificed my sanctum. Herp. Um, I was just looking at my land count, going, "Why don't I have four <laughs> lands?" Um, the celestial colonnades are the worst card for you because they actually kill you. But if the control player is good, they will try to play it as a burn matchup. So you actually want to go after the red sources really aggressively. Um, so here, we're not going to be able to play the Ulamog, but we can go ahead and start cycling through our spheres. See if we find anything good. And that is a good card. That's that is fantastic. Bad. So I would go for the scavenger grounds for now. Okay. Just to get that out there. Like, sure, it like tells our opponent now, but um, yeah, we're just gonna kill him. Um, so I would go after the sulfur balls. Um, col colonnade's the first one. You always go after Colonnade first, and then... But although we have Ulamog next turn, so it might actually be right to just cut them off of white... I'm sorry, red here now. So yeah, that was Sulfur my Falls is good. Um, it is usually Colonnade, then all the red sources, uh, which sometimes feels really bad when um, all your stuff is getting passed and you're going... You could be able to cut them off of white. Your stuff's getting passed, but like hitting the red... Uh, like in the long, long game, cutting them off of red is where Whoa. you want to be. Yeah, uh, sure. Why? He is playing, probably playing Teferi. This is more common now. Oh, I see. I don't know if it's good. I don't. It's definitely common, though. Man, you walk away from modern for a little while and some weird janks these play. Yeah. I feel like Cavister's Insight would actually be sweet in this deck. All right, there's a Teferi. Oh, excuse me. All right. So the thing is, if he bottoms this, this is that's fantastic for you because you're just gonna get another cast trigger off of it. Yeah. So, do I just take out two lands here and ignore the Teferi, or do I take out the Teferi? That's a good question. Um. And I guess the question is, do they have a second Teferi in their hand? I don't know. If we don't pop the Teferi, they get an extra draw off of it. If they play... Honestly, if they have the second Teferi and they tuck the Ulamog, that's also fantastic for them. Like... So I guess like if they have like a path and they like path Olamog and then like draw an extra card with the fairy, that's kind of annoying. Yeah, my my targets are uh colonnade and Teferi. Um I want them to play another Teferi. Just Yeah. We This would be like my worst nightmare as a control player. <laughs> I remember uh, being at club and I was playing Boggs's Tron deck. This is back when Tron played three basic mountains. It was unbelievable. And uh, I could, you could beat miracles with it. Like miracles cannot beat Tron. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of matchups like that where you play like oddball modern deck versus legacy deck and the, the legacy deck just folds because it's not <laughs> meant to deal with it oh man bounce my olabog one oh, time please please <laughs> all right and they're done <coughs> people thought jace would be too good for yeah. modern i know okay so this has some weird Can we play wording. this mid-rangey stuff or Yes, so we actually, we bring in the Thought Knots, we bring in the Thrag Tusks. All right. 
Um, drag tusks are absolutely amazing. Um, Worm coil engine is bad. It, I mean, like path. It's rough. You, it just gets path. It's bad. Um, Oblivion stone is also pretty anemic. Um, the other question is: Do we want three relics? Um, I haven't actually played this with the three relics against Jeskai before, so relics are great against them. Um, but do we just want another threat, or do we want the spell skite to protect our threat from a path? Um, I want to say no to spell skite spell because seems we... loose. They might be playing like terminus, right? Do they do uh, that? Oof. Because yeah, so someone in chat mentioned they run it so like they can cast a Jace, leave up one mana, put Terminus on top, and like cycle it, and then use your other mana to like cast a Terminus. Yeah. Um, so while Spellskite was good in the past, I would say probably not. And the other question is just is a just having a Worm Coil and making them answer it better than a Relic? I don't want to say no. I think we have enough threats. You got the Thought Knots. You got the Thrags. It's fine. Yeah, that seems I, close to me, but I think I'd rather have this. Yeah. Like, I just want to plow through my deck and start finding these things like Worldbreaker and Olamog that mm -hmm. are just going to be super annoying. Yeah, we happen to have the uh, all of the scary cards for them with the cast triggers. <laughs> um, this, this is a very good matchup. Depending on how our opponent plays this... Um, Ooh, yikes. Yikes, no, confirmed. You. This is also kind of a yikes. Is, is, this, the, is this a mulligan? So we're on the draw, and we're going to be able to scry for a land. But we're still not casting anything for a long time. I think this is a mulligan. That was, that was my thought as well. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like it happens sometimes. We're going to four. <laughs> At, like once you get to four, it gets real sketchy. We're gonna keep this. This is actually fine. Sure. Top. That's top. <laughs> we're not super excited about it, but uh, it's fine. Um, we're gonna go ahead and st ooh, they shocked. Okay, fine. Um, it's really scary when they shock and don't do anything because that kind of screams ceremonious rejection. Uh, but we're just going to play out the relic here. Start attacking their graveyard. Nope. Oop. Um, the, I think the worst card possible, the worst sideboard card, it's not Blood Moon, it's not Dampening Sphere, the worst possible card you can ever see is uh, Stony Silence. Because guess what? You, ooh. ooh. So I uh, don't play that yet. Don't play that yet. Play the, uh, play the map first. The map first? So that they don't know that you have the second Tron land. Oh, I see. And that that's fine. Um, you're giving them a chance to mess up. Yep. Um, and it's it's unusual to see Stony Silence out of Jeskai, but they just can board so much random stuff. And like, Especially the, when the you white sideboard cards in modern are always absurd in my mind. So you get good. like stony silence and rest in peace. They're just brutal. Okay, that's a cute hiccup. Let's just go ahead and cycle the sphere. Try to hit a try to hit the throne land. Try to find a stirrings or a scrying. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, power plant or forest. I like. Uh, I like the power plant. Sometimes you can get them to play around giving you a green source. So if we draw like another colorless land next turn that we can play, they might be less uh, inclined to path our Thought Not Seer immediately. It's marginal. Yeah, and I'm always 
just hyper aggressive about tapping relic as soon as something hits the graveyard because you never know when your opponent is going to be playing some stupid delve spell. Yeah, I love that mentality uh, because I have been burned by uh, the logic knot with uh, the fetch land. Like they'll fetch to play the logic knot and yep. delve the card they fetched. It's it's real. So. Is this the point where I just want to take a random card off the top here with this relic? I don't think so. We have the land to cast the Thought Knots here. We're not... I mean, we're looking for Tron, but even if we hit Tron, we're not doing anything. So... They left that? Because we don't. they don't know that you have a green source. Uh, <laughs> 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 Big brain plays. <laughs> so we're just gonna slam a jamma, play the thought knots here. Yep. So we gotta we gotta get a threat down on our friend Jace the Mind Sculptor. Hopefully we get something sweet. Yeah. If they're bouncing it with Jace, they're not. Um, uh, okay. Well, right. Snapcaster and Search aren't amazing right now. No, it's. I want to go after the Cryptic Command. I agree. Oh, the Sandful Stroke doesn't hit the card in our hand. It's going to be not great later, not great for us later, but uh, we have a lot to work through. This isn't the worst, though. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, you... He's going to... He's just going to, like, disdainful stroke that on the way back down. Yeah, I'm, that's fine. I'm okay with this. No. All right. I, th I think we're at the point where we've, we're accepting that we're not going to have Tron for a while, and we're just going to hit seven lands. That's fine. Yeah. And this, this right here is why you just can't play Green Red Tron anymore, as sad as it makes me. <laughs> um, so do I run the Thought Knot into the Disdainful Stroke and just treat that as a one for one, or do I just start with Stirrings? Let's start with the Stirrings. Um, we probably are just going to run it into the... <laughs> okay. So mm. I can this just take hard. this. I think we are taking the mine. It feels bad because you want you want to take that Olamog, but like trying to hit the Tron on our own isn't great. Do they know I have the tower? They do not know you have the tower. Alright, well that's good. Let's just dig it. Take the mine. Uh, play the thought knot. It's gonna get countered. Feels bad. Whatever. It's fine. Like it can get countered, and then I can relic it out immediately, mm -hmm. so that it's never getting snapcastered back. Yeah. Um. Now we're just hoping for like an on cast idiot. Yeah. It honestly might be worth holding the tower for a bit if we just draw lands. I'm somewhat confused by my opponent not playing out the search. Like, it's still a scry every turn. Yeah, I don't know. I would just play the power point, uh, power plant. Well, we could pop the relic. I don't really want them to have the snapcaster. But he's not, they're not doing anything with the Jace. They're just brainstorming. So like, four we, cards. We know maybe we should wait one turn because they might be shuffling away like Snapcaster and Search right now. Yes. Yeah, so just play this out. Do the power plant. You can sit here and look anemic and... It's hard. There's there's definitely some argument to just taking the Ulamog off of that um, ancient stirrings and just hoping. 
but getting fate sealed makes it. Mm. Are they just gonna like? Sure. Yep. That's all right. I'm somewhat surprised they're not just going into like fate seal mode, try to win the game with Jace. Yeah. Although if they're gonna play this like the bird, if they just go like snap helix, if. They do snap helix. It's time to pop the relic. Ooh, actually, let's do that. <laughs> hmm. So it's definitely... Karn thought not Ballista. And... 4, 5, 6, 7... We know that they're playing Mana Leak. I kind of just want to jam the Karn. All right. We have enough mana to... Um, before you play this, I would activate the Relic, yeah. All right, so we got three, four, five, six, seven. We can play around soft counters. Whoa. Um, uh, uh, <laughs> I didn't expect this to happen. I don't know what to do now. <laughs> so options are plussing and just ruining our opponent's life or hitting the Jace. It gets, they don't have the cryptic. Yeah. They do not have it now, but they are going to fetch and be able to brainstorm. And I think it might, they have the Snapcaster and they'll be able to hit the It's Karn. really awkward if we minus on Jace and they have a bolt though. It is. What kind of like permanent removal are they going to have that can hit this they don't oh. they they can bounce it with cryptic command that they don't have right now so do i just plus yeah whatever <laughs> let's just let's just kill him let's plus um if they have to bounce it with a cryptic they're not countering it on the, they're probably not countering it on the way back down honestly yeah Alright. What did they exile? Uh, Scalding Tarn. Okay. Oh, it goes under there. Okay. I... I guess if they, like, Jace Brainstorm find it to Fairy, I'd wish I would have exiled the Jace. Yeah. That's, quote, an answer, unquote. They have a huge problem now, and we can hit it, though. It's... They're looking for it. Yeah, so now, like, any any tutor, or I guess, like, an Ancient Stirrings to find us a, an Olamog would be insane. Or, like, even just starting, like, a World Breaker train would be sweet. Mm-hmm. Uh-oh. Is it the exact scenario I just talked about? Uh... Yeah. Uh... <laughs> Teferi has made this a much worse matchup than it used to be. Um, yeah, I think this is the point where, where we, we are. Crack the relic. <laughs> yeah. And I guess I should like do it before they untap with their stuff. Uh, it doesn't matter. Yeah. Oh, nice. We will be killing the fairy this time. <laughs> Ooh, that is a nice pickup, too. I don't like how our opponent played this game. I think it would have been way better if they'd played the Snapcaster as well. That's so good. All right. We, we are on scraps right now. We're looking for Ulamog. I don't think much of this. This isn't good. 
Yeah, I think once they saw our hand, they should have played the Snapcaster. There's one turn where they could have played it as an ambush viper and been smacking us. I don't... Yeah, like, I, I think they should have played ambush viper, and I also think that search should have come out just as a scry engine. Yeah, I don't think they have the search in their hand anymore. Oh, I agree with that. The, the Snapcaster may be gone as well. Yep. Just, uh, like, taxing our relic with the... You just stick a card in the graveyard every turn is worth so much. They have six... It's it's really Ulamogger bust, which, unfortunately, we have one on the bottom of our library. So that's not great. And if we can shuffle, that would be good. Um, the nice thing is that they don't have a colonnade smacking us. And they haven't been hitting us with that Snapcaster, so we are pretty healthy. Yeah. Um, Even if I but, get to resolve something like a Walking Ballista, like, if I can take the Planeswalkers off the battlefield, I might be able to just fight through counter spells eventually. Mm -hmm. They are still brainstorming, too, which is... Or have they not activated Jace yet? Oh, they did. Yeah. I think this may be the spot where you don't need to brainstorm. Or they're still looking for a cryptic or something, because they know that ceremonious rejection isn't going to resolve from the graveyard. I don't know. They do know that I have this card coming this turn. Um, so right here, we're actually not going to play this. Um, once you get to this position, you want to resolve two spells in the same turn. Now, they didn't have anything before, and I think this might actually be the exception to the rule where we might have an opening because they did brainstorm with Jace instead of plussing. So I would just go ahead and slam it. Yeah, like they knew the Karn was there. and um, But yeah, usually you just want to... If you draw the Karn, yep, yep, and that that's guy. a kill to fairy. Yep. <clears throat> Awkwardly, Karn can just die to a bolt, but I presume that some number of the actual factual bolts are out. Like we saw a lightning helix. That is, that's just wrong. Like, it, it's if you want to, this just guy's best path to killing you is to just play the burn deck because they're not going to out control you. All right. Yeah. All right, we got to ferry off the board. That's a start. And we know that they do not have a counter spell right now. I'm also, I think they might not have that Snapcaster anymore. Agreed, that would have been a great spot for Snapcaster Ceremonies rejection attempt. Like, you know, take me off one of the lands. Yeah, start beating. Okay, thank you very much for resubbing. I appreciate your support. Oh my gosh, 11 months now? Uh, yeah, I guess I did start. Uh... All right, we need the old vlog. <laughs> yeah, I guess I did start dreaming, uh, streaming in January, so I guess I am coming up on one year now. That's crazy. Oh, wow. All right, come on. Old vlog, give me both of these. All right, just hold this, make them think. Just hold it. They know you don't have anything. But as long as they're not plussing the Jace, we are... Although, the Teferi ult is scary. What does that there. even do? Oh, that's the exile <laughs> thing. Yeah, that's that's scary. Yeah, tef Teferi's gonna... We lose if they ult the Teferi. Then they're going to come in with their hieroglyphic illuminations and look like an absolute genius. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't... I don't understand. Oh, wow. Teferi alt with Jace zero is pretty gross. Yeah, we, we do that in Legacy, and uh, I can confirm it's, it's gross. Hmm. 
Mm. Mm. I I do not understand. I don't understand. We are going. What? What is going on? <laughs> oh, we have no recourse here. This is so bad. <laughs> Uh, so, so chat wants to know if uh, you you do any streams or any content of your own. I am planning on starting to stream come the new year. I've been really bad about it. Um, we're just gonna hold this because it doesn't do anything, and it, we want to resolve it, something. It would block this. Uh, I guess that's like just what? JSON summon or Teferi minus. I guess if it gets JSON summoned. That I'm not getting Jace fate sealed. Not getting Jace fate sealed. All right, yeah. We still don't know that they. This is also a counter spell check. Oh, I don't even God. know if they'd counter this. I, I guess they would for the information. Huh. Um. Jeez. <laughs> Bolt. Ah. Uh, I almost want to... <clears throat> yeah, I guess it's the lightning bolt. There's some argument to, like, working through the paths, but it's just so bad. I just take the lightning bolt. We're actually going to start dying here. <laughs> we are not losing to Jace plus two this game. Yeah. <laughs> Ugh. On the plus side, this shuffles the Ulamog on the bottom of our library back into our deck. <laughs> we got that I, going for us. I have Ugin would be great here. Yes, it would. All right, now, now our opponent has learned about the Ambush Viper mode. Oh. Part. And if they, if, they, if they target Lightning Bolt, I'm pretty much obligated into using this. But then they're going to like Snapcaster Lightning Bolt again if they're smart. Yep. But we can play towards them being not smart. All right, then I think that's lethal. 6, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Yep. All right. And they are playing the Stony Silence. I. All right, they got through 30 cards in their library before they saw it, so I have a feeling they're only playing, like, one, maybe two. That makes sense to me. And on the play, I'm just going to say whatever. It's weird that they're playing that. I do not like that they're playing Geist of St. Traff. That is super scary. And <laughs> there's not really anything we could do about it. We could play another uh, Worm Coil engine over a Relic. Well, all right. So so chat. someone in chat saying like they like O-Stone because it's good against the Planeswalkers. But at the same time, if they're playing um, Stony Silence, then that's not a real out to them, right? Yeah. I, like... You can play O Stone. It's it just feels so medium minus. It it, like it seems of, really slow to me. It like it resolves like you play like a threat, they'll counter it, and then you like resolve your own stone. Maybe you get to blow up a planeswalker, which is obviously good, but it it's just like not enough. I think I just like whacking the submit button. Yeah. The plan is to draw a mug. Yeah, I think um we actually want to be a bit a, a little bit less defensive, and I would cut a relic for a worm coil, just kill them. Oh, that's too fine. late. <laughs> um, hmm. This seems like a mulligan to me. What do you think? This is slow. So. Hmm. Our play would be tower, play it, get the ghost quarter. We could go get a forest and then scrying, and that's just that's just too anemic. Let's mulligan. We can do better. We sure can. Yikes. Yikes, yikes, yikes. All this right. Is how, all right. <laughs> this is fine. We're going to scry. We're going to scry that to the bottom. <laughs> 
Uh, Walking Ballista is not like the best card in this matchup. It's kind of medium minus. It's good that it can ping off the Snapcasters, but opponents not playing how they should be and playing it aggressively with their snaps. So they're particularly medium. It's um, it's a fine like card to have when you don't. Uh, well, that's scary. When you don't assemble Tron and you just have like a middling amount of mana. Yeah. I because our opponent's playing hieroglyphic of illuminations, I think they're playing the like Nicolich build that plays opts. So it's, it could be a ceremonious rejection. I would rather get a walking bliss to ceremonious rejection. I think they think we're gonna play like a Yeah. If they counter this, fine. We're we're on the struggle bust. Yeah. Yeah, we'll didn't, we'll see how much chip damage I can get in here with this. They did not opt. So they have something. Do I play a second ballista? Yeah, why not? <laughs> we're <laughs> We're going crazy here. <laughs> The power of Tron, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> nice, we drew a forest. Yeah! <laughs> yeah! Ah! <laughs> <sighs> 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 Okay. Okay. The uh, one silver lining is that we don't have a ton of artifacts in our hand. And there it is. <laughs> I shouldn't have said it. <laughs> oh my. All right. So you can. Ugh, just, never mind. I I don't you think can... I want to go there yet. No. Yeah, the only way we're removing the uh, Stony Silence is with a Karn or a some big spell. What? what? are you doing? What? what? That's not real. <laughs> okay. Oh, uh, fine. Just fine. <laughs> I'm so upset. <laughs> Yep. <laughs> Phil, this league is a struggle. It sure is. <laughs> uh, they must have snap in hand. Yeah. I still I feel wouldn't like do you that. You just don't counter it. You just <laughs> like especially if this Jace is around the corner, like play Jace. Give me a one turn window to do something that I probably can't really do, and then like ceremonious rejection forever. Uh, oh, God. Do I just keep the J Jace in check so it doesn't I think, ult? Yeah, we're just smacking the Jace. And actually, maybe I should ghost quarter this, the secondary mine now in Ancient Stirrings. Oh, that feels so bad. It sure does. I don't, yeah. Oh my goodness, that feels so bad. <laughs> this is not what we want to be doing. Hey, we're going to get Tron. All right. Maybe things nice. are okay. We. <laughs> Everything is fine. <laughs> Nothing can go wrong. Alright. Keep Jace in check. Having the stirrings is nice to get around the Jace Plus. Or we can there. stop Jace Plusing. 
I have, uh, I'm going to have six cards in hand, which is... I mean, that's a lot of cards. Like, <laughs> this is fine. We're going to have, like, Snapcaster Ceremonies Rejection to worry about. Like, the Stony Silence um, kills a lot of our pseudo cantrips. Yeah. One world breaker away from winning the match. I hope so. <laughs> Uh, re regardless of whether or not like we have the right read on how Blue White should be playing the matchup, I think they're playing poorly. Like ceremonious rejection on Relic of Progenitus with the Stony Silence in play, just like seems like an egregious error. Neat. Neat. Somehow I have a feeling that's not going to resolve. <laughs> Oh no! You know what? A path to exile on the Walking Ballista is better than a path on our Willbreaker, our Ulamog. Alright, so I think I don't jam this. I think I play Ancient Stirrings, right? Um, like, try to force them to counter this. That's fair. Yeah, let's go for the Ancient Stirrings. They also don't know that we have Tron yet. Although, we could get Mana Leaked here, which would be negate. Okay. Yeah, let me tell you how bad it feels when they negate the Ugin. So do I just want to pass here? I think there you play the mine. The value that you get if you draw a Sanctum or something like that is it's not worth missing. Just okay. try and bamboozle them. So best yeah. draws are like Sanctum or Ancient Stirrings or Olamog. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Not quite Olamog, Olamog yet, but like that's what I want to have. Oh uh, no! <laughs> On the bright side, we are getting to the point where uh, your number of lands is outweighing having Tron, as unfortunate as Field of Ruin is. Yep. I'm surprised they went for the tower. Seeing as they've already hit a mine. I don't know. Nice. Oh no. <laughs> All right, we are one tower away from fighting through this game. But uh, I have a feeling they're gonna plus this turn and I have a feeling we're not gonna be drawing a tower. <laughs> Nope. There's mm -hmm. hope. There's there's probably a snapcaster too. We'll cross Maybe. that bridge when we get there. Yeah. This uh walking blister not being able to activate is feeling really bad right now. <laughs> mm. Well How about you? <laughs> It could be another Jace, too. Uh, path, all right. We all are right, now out of forest. Let's see if we can get them to counter another ceremonious uh, rejection or something. No, <laughs> not this time. Uh, no, this is the first modern stream I'm trying. Uh, if, if people like it, I may have a couple more modern guests from time to time and do this sort of thing again. If people don't like it, I will continue with the uh, regularly scheduled content. This is, uh, this is an experiment over the holidays. Let me tell you, though, Death and Taxes in Modern is... Oof, that doesn't seem like a good card against us, but it's uh, pretty good right here. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that seems so loose. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, like Karn minus gets it. Ugin minus gets it too, right? Oh, blocks it forever. <laughs> they also just don't want to tap out for a five mana threat. Yeah. Yeah, I th I think that's more likely. 
So someone in chat suggested like they might have so many bad main deck cards that like this is just something that's better than the worst main deck cards. Yeah, that, yeah. that might make sense to me. I just have a feeling they boarded out a lot of the burn. So we haven't we haven't seen it. Which oh man. Strong. Deck, come on. Give me a world breaker. Yeah, I do I do like the art on Bane Slayer Angel. Yeah, but Eldrazi Taxes is one of Tron's worst matchups. It's it is just abysmal with the the Stony Silences. The uh, they have Relic Orders and like Aven Mind Sensors. Yeah, Aven Mind Sensors is really bad. Uh, the the two mana Lean in Arbiter super bad for you. All right, um, so I'm up to seven, right? Four, seven, one more. You're up to seven. <laughs> Um, and then the uh, Violin Flicker Wisp on your end step, Wisp out your Tron land feels really bad. <laughs> There's the burn. Uh-oh. Oh, all right. We're all right. GG. They, they got us. Yeah, Eldrazi Displacer is a sweet card. Every time I get to play with that card in Legacy, it just feels busted. Well, we're starting strong here. We're We're struggling. I... I don't know. It happens. Yeah, when you're... We, we haven't... We've been... We just played two good... In theory, very good matchups. So... <laughs> Yikes. <laughs> um... Well, we'll just win the bad matchups. We're going to win all the bad matchups. And that's how it goes a lot of the time. Yeah, I, I did a, a test stream with Bryant Cook uh, somewhat recently. And uh, we got paired against Blue Black Reanimator. And he's like, well, this is our worst matchup. Like, <laughs> this is like a 2080 matchup. And we won that one. <laughs> oh, man. Don't don't talk to me about Storm. I. Ugh. So... Every time she plays Storm at an event, I go up to her in between rounds. I'm like, hey, how's it going? And she's just like, ugh. <laughs> in order for my opponent to win, they had to have this exact combination of seven cards. And, and they had them all. I, I just, just feel like, like you're so unlucky when you play that deck. I, I, I really am. The, I just remember the one tournament... I played seven Chalice decks in nine rounds, and I'm like, I'm done. I'm not playing this. I'm going to play a Chalice deck. <laughs> um, this is actually all right. It is slow. Um, but I have double tutor available. so You have double tutor. Yeah, we're going to... Do I map or sphere turn one? Or... I would like to play the sphere because you're gonna be you're you're giving yourself an extra chance to draw a uh, Tron land off of it. Okay. Um. Champion Parish as the turn one play is one of the scariest things you can see. Uh, so I presume this is like five color humans. This is five color humans. Hopefully. Black. Uh, yikes. That, this, this is about, this is not good. <laughs> uh, if they're smart, they're going to take the Sylvan Scrying. Since we have spent our turn playing the star. <laughs> Feels bad. I mean, the good news is that if we can assemble Tron, we have two board wipes. Yeah. Um... We're gonna be taking a lot of damage though. Champion of the Parish is really scary if you can't pop it with the ballista as soon as possible. Which you can really only do when, when you're, you're on, on the play. play. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, they they took the stone. Oh. That's good. Alright. We've put the fear in their heart. They they okay. Um so, so cycle this, try to hit a Tron land, Sylvan Scrying. Yep. That is not a Tron land, that's no. alright. Alright, we're uh Doesn't matter, right? Get tower. Uh, I would get the uh you wanna get the mine. If you're like searching, you wanna play the tower last in case it like Okay. You yeah. 
Do they have anything main deck that can muck with your lands? Uh, not, not really. They don't. They can play uh three. Oh mana God! Th Yikes! That's not good. Um, three mana Thalia is pretty obnoxious. Uh, I don't know how we're gonna. He's named Walking Ballista. Deal. Interesting. I am. I'm okay with how this is progressing. I don't know. All right, that is a so cool draw. So do I play Spear to yeah. cycle it? Cycle through. Then get Tower or uh, yeah. Yeah, I have a feeling that they might have another meddling mage in their hand. Ooh, ooh. Oof. That is just dirty. And like this, this is this is where it is. Like your opponent, they probably have another meddling mage. They probably are gonna slam it. Think Name that Ugin. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Jokes on you. Hopefully, they just don't like die. Can they kill me if they like double Thalia's lieutenant or something stupid? I. I don't know. I'm, I'm not doing they, the math on that. If they kill me with I, it, they kill me with it. I don't think they can kill you right here. And yeah, they do have the other meddling mage. And. uh... Pretty sure. Yep, Ugin. Uh, yes. Yes. <laughs> God, this feels good. Yep. And uh, we are going to do it now so that they can't float the mana with Hierarch and bamboozle you with a... I'm sorry, this isn't... It doesn't matter. Humans doesn't play company. Um, I'm thinking about Bant Spirits. Oh, uh, okay. Well... Arc. Still, like, good habits don't give them the mana. Yeah. Would you like All to right. name Ugin again? Would you like well, to name Walking that. Ballista? Bad <laughs> news, friend. Bad news. I think we're going to play a very large Walking Ballista this turn. So we can actually just uh, cycle the map into another tower. Oh, yeah, that's just free to do. Yep. There is some argument to playing an Oblivion Stone to get that vial off the field, but I just don't think they. I can don't win. think the vial matters right now. <laughs> it doesn't. Yeah, I would just play the Walking Ballista, kill the dude, and be done with it. He, there, the game's over. Um, we could have a problem with multiple Mantis Riders. Would be bad. Let's just, yeah, there's, there's very little. Nice. Okay. Um, now for this matchup, this is one of the times where you feel pretty bad that I'm not playing the fourth Oblivion Stone to go for the relics. So the relics are awful in this matchup. They can come out. Um, cards that are good. Contortion. Are Angel Contortion for sure. Is Warping uh, Whale fine? Warping Whale is not, just not good enough. Um, like you, you can kill like, it's better on the play because you could kill the uh the champion the champion but like that's also not what you want to be doing on the play you just want to yeah be okay that's fine um drag tusks are great uh just being able to gain the life like sometimes you're not able to block their flying creatures and stuff but um which is why it's advantageous over warm coil sometimes uh just having the immediate life gain um the you can cut one ulamog just that them being on the play thinking you're probably not going to get to 10 mana before you die. Okay, and that's then, fair. Uh, one more cut. What is it? Um, all right. Um, Karns are actually not that good in this matchup. I would board out. Let's... Yeah, we can just cut a corn. It's just 
they go wide enough that Karn isn't necessarily the best thing that you can do. You really want to, yeah. Sometimes you need it to pop off, like you saw that they had multiple meddling mages and the uh, the freebooter, and you need to be able to remove one of those things with something that's not Ugin and not Oblivion Stone, but they're not at their best. This hand is not good enough, unfortunately. Uh, uh, is this, this fine? This is probably not. The, uh, all right. So we have a scry. We have a star to cycle through to find any land. And we have Worldbreaker is not like at its best in this matchup, but it. It's not at its best, um, but the Oblivion Stone is busted. I think this is a keep. It's just awkward. Yeah. This is, yeah, we are going to keep this, but it's one of those ones that can go wrong very easily. And top it. Uh, we're going to top it, and it doesn't feel good. Yeah. <laughs> so someone in chat asks, do you bring in Nature's Claim? Sometimes they have Detention Sphere. Uh, if they have Detention Sphere, like, so be it, right? That's a three-mana non-creature spell. Like, that's not getting us dead. Yeah. I haven't seen humans bring in Detention Sphere against Tron very often. Um, so, it's Star that I always play first, right? They don't have any way to kill it on... Uh, you can play at the Sphere... Uh, the only card that kills it is Vithian Renegades, which is a three mana card, and they probably, I don't know if they bring it in. It's it's not great. They just want to be aggressive. And... Oh, Dampening Sphere, not Detention Sphere. Sorry. Oh, um, Dampening Sphere is humans is one of the few decks that can like back up a Dampening Sphere, which they probably do have. There is definitely an argument to bringing in nature's claim. Okay, we are getting bamboozled right here. Yeah. Uh, do I cycle I, through the other one this turn? I don't think you do. I think you wait on your green mana. Uh, if you don't draw a land next turn, we can cycle through it, but things aren't looking good. Yeah, oh, Jazzy, that's that's a good point. Like, if they are running something like a Dampening Sphere because they have these Ancient Ziggurats that can only be used for creature spell mana, um, that would be hard to cast. Yeah, the problem with Thought Not Seer is that it just a lot of time doesn't do enough when they're, uh, when, like, the champion becomes a 5-5. Five, five and and Thalia's lieutenant can just make everything huge. Yeah. All right. All right. That was Through good. Land, that is good. Can't cast our Oblivion Stone, which is much less good. All right. This is fine. This is fine. <laughs> this is fine. <laughs> And I think this is another good thing to showcase about Tron that sometimes you mull to five like every time in your tournament and you just you get demolished. And we haven't really seen one of the games where it's just natural Tron, Karn, Karn, Worm Coil, and you're like, I can't lose. Uh, hopefully one of those will come up soon. <laughs> yeah, just kind of like do, do the other side of the variance here. <laughs> We've uh we've been fighting through. I would I really want to play against Affinity because that is a really skill intensive matchup. It's a lot of fun, um, and it's gotten a lot harder since they uh, they have Baby Karn now, which in the boarded games is actually really scary when they can play it on turn two or three and you're kind of dirtling around trying to kill their whatever. Um, afraid of dying, and then they back it up with this Planeswalker pressure, which is more difficult for you to handle. Um, I would go ahead and save that star. 
is we are trying to cast our Thrag Tusk. Okay. Um, we can cycle it next turn. Try to hit the lands, cast the Thrag Tusk, and which is not going to win us the game, but hopefully will stem the bleeding. I mean, that's really what I need. Ooh, there's Mantis Rider. Uh, that's not what we want to see. That Vylon 2 is also scary. Yeah, Thalia's lieutenant coming down here. Uh. <laughs> yeah. You know, if you call it, it's gonna happen. So. <laughs> All right. All right. We, uh, da, da, da. Even if we play the Thrag Tusk here, there's a good chance we are just dead. Well, that's a lot of math, so I'm I'm not gonna do that. I presume I'm still just dead, right? Like I block a three three, I take four seven eight nine ten. Yeah. Yeah, we're still dead. And they have even more damage. Nice. Okay. Strong. <laughs> All right. Uh, so were you referring to uh, cranial plating affinity or hardened scales affinity a minute ago? I think uh, I both of them are super interesting. The baby Karn's going to come out of traditional affinity. Um, okay. Uh Okay, so I actually regret how we boarded last game a little bit. I think we should have taken out another corn or two for Nature's Claims. I am less interested in Nature's Claim on the play. Okay. I think ship it back. It's fine. We we were very unfortunate. We've been we've had a lot of rough hands and a lot of mulligans today. Okay. Well, I have uh, two Tron pieces and a way to find the third. There you go. This hand is a little clunky in that it doesn't have uh, the land green source. We have enough to cast both of the spells we have, but if we end up with another green spell later, it's going to be little worse but yeah let's just go get ourselves a uh, tron piece and slap off a Ooh, a worm coil engine next turn that seems decent I like our position because if our opponent plays something like a Kite Sail Freebooter, they aren't taking our payoff cards. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Thalia, Thalia passed her prime here. Yeah. Let's uh, just slam a jam a worm coil. Thalia is taxing us a little bit on not being able to play one of the... Uh... One mana cards, but yeah, but uh, we're we're gonna go so over Thalia soon. <laughs> we'll be we'll be all right. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, with the Thalia Thrag Tusk might not be at its prime here, but gaining life is still good, and it'll be able to block something else off the board. Gaddic Teague um, is surprisingly irrelevant right here. Uh. <laughs> oh, man. Okay. Well, we drew the Karn. Ah, uh, never mind. Teague. Awkward. Hmm. Awkward. We need to find... Huh. This just got worse. Um, let's start by cycling our sphere. Oblivion Stone would be really good. One of the cute things about Oblivion Stone is that you can just target their Phantasmal image and kill it, and then Wrath it the next turn. Um, so... Yeah, yeah just uh, this... cycle, cycle through some of your... A 
let's let's go through the first one. Ooh, I am having you not update on the hangouts. Oh. All right. Well, it's just slam with rag tusk, right? Yeah, slam with rag tusk. And yeah. This is this got a lot worse. No attacks, it... right? Just kind of hold back and just hang out. <laughs> 